Here's my transmission, my third transmission. They did a very professional job this time, so I'm very happy with that. Welcome back, guys. If you've been following along, the transmission's out at this point. We have it on the ground. We have since taken it back to the junkyard. We got a swap for a 30,000 mile transmission, and here we go. So welcome back. Here's the car. Here's how we look under the hood. Got a big old hole there, guys. Nothing there. Some cherry picker at the bottom. Okay, so this is where we're at. Cleaning out the radiator. Here it all is, guys. See those lines? See that line there? P pointing right at me. See that line there? That one. And that one. I'm going to start from the line that goes in at the lower portion, which is this one, so we don't have a waterfall effect. Because if I go from the top line, it'll fall like a waterfall and it'll get air pockets that way. So what makes sense to me is to start from the lower line and blow upwards up to the top and then all the way back out. We're going to use the air compressor, putting this end on the air hose. Okay. That way I can bump this rubber tip right up in that fitting and push some air through it. First I'm going to fill it with some kind of cleaner and randomly keep pushing and pushing and pushing until everything comes out the other side. Air hose right into here with brake part cleaner. Cleaner coming out. Alright guys, now we've officially gotten all the fluid out of the radiator. Alright, here we go. Okay, we're up in there. So now we have to get everything to line up. So we gotta get those torque converter bolts lined up, guys. So, so this is where a lot of shoving and back and forth and, and all that comes into place. Okay, there's the torque converter. We got everything lined up. So now we're gonna push it together. four of those. I had to line four of those up without a dowel rod in the transmission, so I used bolts. I lined it up with this bolt here. Once I got that lined up, I popped one through and I can kind of swivel it on that fitting. And I went underneath with the trans crack, and you saw some video footage there, uh, where I lined up the bolts. So here okay. we are. I'm going to vacuum the dirt here so everything sits flush. And I'm going to then uh, put this back on this piece with the bolts, slide that through the center and put the bolt on, pull it tight. Alright, we got it back in place. Ladies and gentlemen, so we're going to put that back in there too. So Okay, done. We got two bolts up top, two bolts on bottom, so the transmission is snug against the engine block. The torque converter is going to put thread locker, and I think that's very important. These are bolts you cannot get to. In the racing industry, these bolts back out all the time and destroy things. So in the everyday driving industry, we should do something to secure it well. Okay. I'm going to put one drip here in the threads. I think that's good. Tight. 
next? One more, guys. Red locked. Now, we're gonna put the 16 millimeter bolts all the way around the transmission. Don't forget the one long one is on the underside at the top top on the left. Just we pay attention. Okay. The whole engine goes like this because we don't have the torsion bar in here, so it goes like this. is in peoples so let's put the torsion bar back on okay now we go from the side guys now we have to start putting the axles back in all the shielding here has got to go back in afterwards we got to get the harness plug back in there and start running it up we got to start working from here last one So we have the warmer in, all right. We've got all the hoses attached to the warmer, and we're going to connect the ground to the transmission. We're going to connect the wiring harness, the main harness there, and we're going to put in all the sensors, okay, back into the trans. So we're going to handle that. We want as much clean fluid in here as possible. I went to the extent of even blowing out the radiator with brake cleaner and air. So I'm trying to keep this even, the hoses, I blew out brake cleaner and air. Um, so most of this has been drained from the junkyard because obviously nothing's coming out of the CV axle holes. It's been moved around. So I'm assuming there might, you know, there might still be some in the pan. So I should get that out. I'm going to do that. Just put those in right there. That bracket for this radiator hose here. Put that bracket right there. Right there. You know, so follow that hose, uh, makes a curve, oh, there's the clamp for it, and it plugs in right there. That's the second one in. We're going to get that now, and then this one goes to the T. Pretty simple, right? This one here. So we're going to plug this one right to that T there. Okay, so we got those two hoses on. We can put the shifter linkage back on, 13 millimeter. That's it guys, got it on. We got the radiator hoses connected, we got the shifter cable back on, we're moving along. Okay guys, we are now gonna start passing the wiring harness back down in there. First thing we have to connect is here. This is the first piece, and this is the transmission connection, as well as the throttle linkage, or the shifter linkage. Okay, and there's one speed sensor there. I already got the hoses on the last video connected. Small, thin radiator hoses off the warmer. Okay. Good news, we're on the way back together. God bless. Electrical and so a few parts and, we, and we're good to go. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, let's get what we want down in the hole and what we don't want. So we're going to leave ready to go to the next part, which is towards the back. We're now going to start connecting the wiring harness. I passed it through. I put you close to me so you can see what I'm doing, okay? So, this goes up top. There goes the speed sensor. All right. There we go. Okay? So I did it a little different. I popped off the orange ring on the outside. I went around and popped every little tooth off the top. Because if you don't line this up properly, it will bend the prongs on the valve body and then you have serious issues. So what I do is I popped it all off, I screwed the orange outside ring in first, and then I lined up the plug with the groove in the front and slowly pushed it down until it went in. And we have a locked plug. Locked and secure. Everything's all the way down, I guarantee it, because I put it on first. So it's locked and secure, okay? So now, let's start working our way up. Okay? Speed sensor, done. That's gonna go up to the shifter, okay? It's going back together, guys, slowly but surely. All right, so, we got that, now, we gotta put this ground back on here. All right, I got a bolt from the last bracket. Okay, we gotta put the dipstick in too. So it looks like a 13 and a 10. Wrenches are fine. Just needs to be snug. Okay, that's one. Now. That's two. So we got those two rear centers. We got the shifter linkage. We got the two centers. All the centers on the trains have been plugged in. Looks like all the wires that go to the trains are done. So basically, I'm just zip tying them to the old zip ties. I cut them, I left them there, and I'm zip tying around brackets and the stuff that's already there. Okay, we're going to raise it back up now. And we're going to get a zip tie around that... Uh, Crankcase sensor, crank sensor, and we're gonna start putting the shield back on. Okay, once we get that back together, we can come back up here, man, and start working. Actually, we can get the axles in. Once we do that, we'll get the axles in, then we'll just have to work up here and we're done. Isn't that great? We're back up, and there's gonna be a lot of up and down right now. Let me show you guys what I'm doing. See that? Put a zip tie there, see the white one? I'm gonna try to pull that metal tubing over the wiring a little better there. Okay, so now let's get the shield, eight millimeters. Let's start putting it on there. I believe there was two bolts on that. What the hell, Bobby? Oh my goodness. See it there? One, two, back there. Well, I got it though, they're both tight. That's the one of the two shields. Now we gotta put the rigidity point right here. So that's up, and then the stud goes on the bottom. So we're going to start from the top. I'm going to lower the car yet again, and we're going to start from the top and let it fall down, and then I'll raise it back up. Back down we go again to put the rigidity bracket on the exhaust by the catalytic converter. And it tells you which way. So upper, okay? So this goes up. Okay, I'm getting it. I'm getting it, ladies and gents. I'm gonna have to raise it back up so I can start the start the bottom one too. You don't want to tighten this one yet, right? Because then you won't be able to find the hole there. There is long extensions, so give it an extra little bit because the extensions obviously torque, they twist. Okay? 
Throw it on. Now I'm going to lower it yet again, get the top one. Then we're going to put in the CV axles. And the top bolt is a 16 millimeter as well. Basically, I'm just going to get my little wrench here. See if I can tap it with a hammer, get away easy. Okay, guys, we got it. You gotta find where you got room to swing the wrench. You pull those two hoses up. There's two main radiator hoses. Pull them up, and you can get a good bite on it. That's tight enough. All right, put that there. That's gonna be about there. All right, right where it was before. Okay, so we are now going back under. So we're gonna do these CV axles, control arms. We're gonna put the cover back over the axle. Both sides, we can get the wheels on. That's great news. The shield, that's next. Let me show you while I do it. Okay, I'm gonna crank on it a little bit. transmission fluid that I took out. So basically just get my finger wet and start lubricating this sucker, man. That's a good thing. Gotta keep them moist. Okay. Let's do this side as well. We're just moving along here. We're looking real good, real professional, real clean. I don't think any shop can do it any better than us, guys. That's the truth. If we're all doing it the same like I'm doing it here, and if you're doing it at home, I don't think any shop can do any better. Don't believe so. Save your money. Get off. Get your ass off the couch. And go fix your own car. I will never, ever give anybody $800 to $1,000 to do this transmission job. It's just not in my DNA. Why? It's not hard, because they have special tools. It's 2020. These tools aren't that much anymore. In the 80s and 90s, okay, a rack was probably five grand. I got this whole rack for 1,800 bucks, installed for another 100. And now I can do whatever I want. Specialty tools, you buy them as you go. Research before you start the job so you know if there's any specialty tools that way before you get ripped into it. Research good. That's the difference between somebody who succeeds at this and fails. How much research did you put in? Research equates to experience, eventually, okay? But that's the first step. So, yeah. Anyways, CV axles, up next. Passenger side CV axle hole there. Right here, see me? Woo! Okay, we're gonna go right to here. I already lubed the seal. Okay, there's the shield I put on, that's fine. Didn't have to come after the fact. But this is where we're at. I'm going to slide her on in. Okay, here we go, guys. that bottom out. That's in there. Sure is. Alright. That's a good deal there. We're going to put some never sees now here on the splines right here. Okay. I won't put it through there. It doesn't get stuck ever in the future. Okay. Okay. One CV axle in. I'm gonna put some on there too, but not yet. Now we have to do a control arm. So there's a slot, one way in, and it slides right in, it works. So I'm gonna put this, because these 
cannot break. Serious problems if they do. That's the subframe, I think. No, that's the body it goes into. We'll be drilling and tapping then. Screw all that. I believe in this, guys. I, even if it isn't me, I believe the next guy shouldn't have to suffer. I believe that. So just use your noodle and quit being such a knucklehead and do things the right way. Done. Okay, we're both done. Now, the control arm, the ball joint needs to go. Goes right in by itself. There it is. Now we gotta bring it down to the notch. And we're good to go. Okay, we got one axle ready to go. We're ready for go for cruise, man. All right, guys, what we have today is the driver's side. We have to finish that up, okay? First, we're gonna put the CV axle in here, all right? Control arm in here at the bottom. We're gonna get it lubed up, never seize everything. Put it back through, put the pin in, put the brakes on, clamp them down, we're done. We're front wheels, and we're out of here. We lower the car, we go to the top, we wrap it up. We're going to line it up as best as we can. We're going to mallet this thing. Hear that click? Hear that metal click? Ding! That was it. Axles in, guys. It's in, it's in. No worries. Thirty millimeter socket. So wheel well is next, and we're going to move to the top. We're going to wrap this up once and for all. Give him a little crank. Valve stem here lined up. Get it centered. Voila. So we're off to the top. Starters next.
five bolts that go on the intake and there's two bolts up top. Two up top, five on the bottom. The two up top are shorter than the five on the bottom. So we have a total of six long bolts and the two short ones up top. So you take one of the six, because it takes five here, and that goes on the ground. I wasn't sure, I checked, I checked the link to make sure now, so I don't go through the block and break anything, because that happens, all right, if the bolt is too long. So I checked all that, and I verified that the bolt that goes on the ground is the same length as the bolts that go into the front of the intake. The ones on the rear of the intake are slightly shorter, probably about half inch short. You know, I should have connected the damn wires before I put the starter on, huh? Starter's on, it's got power. Caps are on, it didn't rip the boot, God bless. There's the red, the black right underneath, see it? Okay. So starter bolts are on, there's three of them, one up top there, one there on the side, and one at the bottom. I got them all. Now, there's two more over here. There's the air conditioner down low, that's the final one. That's the first one we took off, that goes there. And there's the alternator, and then the back of the alternator is screw. So there's three lines here. So I'm going to start working to the top now, and getting all the stuff up here. The fuel injectors and the coil packs. Alternator lines in, power's in, okay, charging wires are in. Two lines right there between the radiator, see that radiator line right there? In between there and the back there's a plug and over to this side underneath it there's a plug. Very hard to get to. Underneath here. Underneath the radiator line on the block there's two sensors. I got those in. So we're done down here. I'm going to put a zip tie right here just to hold everything in place. We can actually put the dipstick back in and we can start clamping down the lines here. Okay. So we're close. We got everything in. We got the last bolt tightened. Right here on the latch, that should be fine. I'm now ready to put the hoses on, okay? So let's start doing that. Okay. Now, let's start putting the tray together. top yet yeah, I have antifreeze so what do you do you pour it in the reservoir so how do you fill up a CVT I'm going to show you today first we're going to raise the car there's nothing there so let's get it out if I could show you I will you see that little Allen in there you see that that's the tube we're not taking it out now because there's no reason but the tube is approximately two and a half inches long and it goes in to the pan this way, towards the top. The pan level fills, it comes up over the tube, leaks out, you know you're full. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it open. I'm going to put a drain pan here underneath, okay? So let's see what happens. I have literally $80, $85 worth of NS3 Nissan transmission fluid. So wish me luck, guys. We are good to go. Continuously variable transmission CVT fluid Nissan NS3 retails 20 bucks a quart. That is absolutely ridiculous. They are marked way up. They like to charge $15.99 when they discount around here in Northwest Indiana. So I'm assuming they like to make 10 bucks on each one because that's just how the mind works. They're probably $5.99. They're probably expensive to begin with. I get that. They're probably expensive to begin with. It's a special fluid. It's new. They just started making it. It's marked up. So they're adding 10 on top. Believe that. So they're retailing them at 20. If you don't say nothing, you will pay the 20. And uh, you can start haggling. And they'll go as low as $15.99. But that seems to be the bottom line. We're going to put this in until it comes out. Then we've got to start the car. Let it run. Look at the color of that. It's flipping blue, man. Look at the color of that. 
That is a pretty fluid. Quart number two. I'm going to get to three, three and a half, four-ish, and I'm going to start looking. All right. So, quart number four. I suspect something will happen now. Okay, wait, there it is. Okay, it's leaking. So, we're going to put the screw on it. And we're going to fire this thing up. I got a finger tight because I'm going to be in and out of here a lot. Did it settle? Is there fluid? Yes, there is. Okay, so let's leave that alone. So it's definitely coming out, so I feel good about it, okay? It's full. It's definitely full. So we're going to fire this old, old girl up. See what she talking about today. We're going to take it. <laughs> Tough fight. Okay, I think we're on there. Good enough. <laughs> Sounds good. It had some weird little knocks and noises in the beginning, but this car ain't ran in, you gotta understand that. A month. It's as quiet as can be now. Everything's quiet. It's at 140 degrees per the OBD tube. 145 degrees. When we get it to 160 and start putting more fluid in and raise it up and see. 4th Let's go inside so you can see what I see. 185 degrees. So we're operating great. Transmission's hot. I ran it through the gears here. Alright. Going through the live data, everything looks phenomenal. I'm excited guys. It feels good. It's quick. It responds. It responds. It responds. I like that. These are all good signs. I'm bringing it to Nissan. We're gonna get this thing software to uh, the software updated to the proper software. You're gonna take my first test drive with me. We got her warmed up at 185 degrees. Let's see how she drives. Everything's up to temperature. RPMs look good for the speed I'm doing. gentlemen I am happy to say we have a completed 2014 Nissan Versa that is driving absolutely spectacular I hope I was able to assist in uh, in your own personal needs as far as if you're doing any work on your transmission I hope I was able to assist in that and uh, thank you thank you very much don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you again have a good one. Thank you, guys. Bye now.